Time to get your fix. Come on down, get your Hello, my name is Zachariah with Old Man Gaming, and welcome to another horrible game review. I'm kind of excited about this one today. Uh, it was an interesting game. I think I have a different take than the rest of the world, but we'll get into that in a second. First, I gotta do a couple of disclaimers. Uh, number one, I do not give scored reviews here. I don't believe in them. I think it's one of the most subjective forms of art, and therefore I'll be telling you what the overall game is and then what the pros and cons of the games are in my opinion as all reviews are and then I'll tell you whether I personally will be sticking with it outside the purposes of this review or not also just so you know I do snap judgment reviews here the horrible in the title of the content that you are watching right now does not necessarily have to do with the game or DLC that I am reviewing but much more the actual review itself I only get about five to ten hours with each game so that's what I have to go on. My idea behind these reviews are I'm trying to play it and see if you're going to like it right off the bat and if you should spend your time exploring it. The other thing that you should know, unfortunately with this one, I did not get the full five hours. I think I clocked in at about three hours, 45 minutes. I just had a really bit busy weekend. I was doing everything I could to get through it. But I'm still going to tell you my thoughts. I'm still going to tell you what I feel from it. And since the game is only 15 hours Story-wise, I feel as though I've viewed enough to be able to give you an informed decision as to what you're getting into right off the bat. All that out of the way, you're thinking to yourself, what is the game? Well, the game is The Ascent. It just dropped in the Games Pass. It is the twin-stick shooter, uh, and it is... Man, it's a real interesting game. Real interesting game. Uh, but basically, the entire premise of this game is a very cyberpunk kind of feel, kind of aesthetic. It's top-down, twin-stick shooter, as I said, but it's got a lot of role-playing game elements. You start the game by creating your character. Uh, then you head into just basically a sewer and taking on some nasty little small demons for the... Uh, not demons, but bad guys for your simple, like, tutorial stuff. Um, then, once you get out of that, you end up working for a stack boss. You see, you live in this giant building that is basically a civilization unto itself, run by one company. That company suddenly goes bankrupt, which plunges the entirety of the civilization into kind of panic. Stack bosses are the people who run each district, and they're trying to figure out how to deal with it. You work for one such one named Poon. Uh, basically, you spend a good amount of the of the early parts of the game uh, working for him and trying to figure out how to correct this and I'm sure you get into more conspiracies and bigger things as the game goes on but most of the things he asks you to do they boil down to you shooting people that's basically what it is now you'll go from area to area there is a hub area where it has all your stores and whatnot uh, a lot of people milling around and you can't just shoot anybody willy-nilly there but as you pass into kind of more of the outskirts of each different district and city you end up running into these areas where bad guys show up one of the interesting things about this game is not all the bad guys just immediately attack you. A lot of them are just standing around. They'll give you a warning, and you can kind of try and get around them or walk away uh, and let bygones be bygones. But if you stick around too long or you take shots at them, then you have a gunfight. As you fight through this game, you'll earn experience points, which then level your character up. Uh, leveling up a character gives you three character points each level to drop into some certain specific areas. Now these areas are just static areas, they're not perk based, uh, such as critical hit rate, reload time, accuracy, stuff like that. Each point you put into it boosts your overall stats and your ability to fight. You also get a standard amount of health, standard amount of uh, enhancement points. You can also earn augmentations, which gives you actual powers to use in combat. Uh, the only one that I've gotten so far is this fist thing that like punches bad guys out of their 
out of their skeletons or whatever, which is really cool for melee sort of thing. You also pick up different guns, um, and going into the combat, one of the most interesting things about this game is the ability to switch between hip fire and shoulder fire, uh, which is something... Uh, now, granted, I haven't played a ton of twin-stick shooters, but something I've never seen in a twin-stick shooter. Now, you're not going to have to worry about ammo in this. Once you collect a gun, that gun has unlimited ammo, but it does have a clip size, which causes a reload, uh, which makes gunfights a little bit more strategic. It, it makes it even more strategic when you add in the hip fire to shoulder fire thing. And what I'm talking about is when you're at hip fire, you're shooting at hip level. So you'll be able to hit shorter enemies, and, and uh, but your shots will be will bounce off cover very easily. If you go to hip fire, uh, you raise your gun and you take bigger shots at people's heads. Uh, it actually has an effect to stagger the people you're taking shots at as long as they're tall, tall enough to be hit by the shoulder fire, uh, and it fires over cover. However, you move slower when you're in that hip fire aiming, I'm sorry, shoulder fire aiming mode, which is a very interesting area. You kind of have to always consider, do I go shoulder fire to stagger the enemies but move slower, uh, or do I go hip fire so that I have that more versatility of moving back and forth? Adding into this, you can actually crouch yourself, which allows you to step behind cover which is really cool. That can protect you from gunfire, and then if you raise to the shoulder level, he actually raises the gun over the cover and you can take shots at people that way. The AI is very interesting and will immediately start to flank, so you can't just use this to gain the system though, you have to use it strategically. This also supports online multiplayer. Unfortunately, I was never able to try it with somebody else. It just ran out of time, uh, but uh, you can actually have up to four people, I think. It's three or four people in with you, which is, I'm sure, very cool. I've heard it's very cool. I just did not get to actually play that or experience that to review that. So, that being said, I, I think I've covered a lot of the basic elements. Uh, so let's move into the pros and cons. Now, uh, pros, right off the bat, I am going to differ with a lot of the baseline pro, uh, a lot of the baseline people out there. A lot of people, especially IGN, said they didn't like the story. It wasn't memorable. I don't know if it stays this way, but I can tell you right now, I think the story is one of the cooler things about it. Now, the characters, yeah, they're kind of throwaway. I'm not going to say they're not. They're very stereotypical characters, but I love the idea of this giant building uh, with just hundreds of people kind of in indentured servitude uh, to this corporation that then goes bankrupt, causing this in crazy internal power struggle. Now, I think that's just such a cool and unique idea. I don't personally remember seeing that in any sort of game, uh, cyberpunk or otherwise. Um, I think the easier way to do it would, would have been like, oh, they're just trying to reach the top to take out the corporation, or they're just trying to fight off other corporate raiders, but instead they went with this weird power struggle angle, and I think it just creates a lot of cool, interesting ideas there. My second pro is the uh, addition of like all sorts of like non-linear aspects to this. So, <clears throat> twin stick shooter usually you've got you know just levels that you're going through that you're moving through, you're moving up. Uh, even with ARPG kind of elements, uh, this one isn't. You have a lot of side quests that unlock really fast. Uh, you can collect these side quests and then go back to places you've already explored to complete them. I mean, sure they all boil down into gunfights, but. It's still, it's a lot of replayability and it adds a lot of time and hours to it. It also adds a lot of character to this game, which, in fairness, it just has an overabundance of, but we'll get to that. Uh, the other thing about this replayability, they have these things called bounties, where you can fast travel back. Usually there's a, a way to fast travel from an area that you've reached kind of the end of. Uh, to the hub world, but if you just walk back, it respawns all these like weird bad guys in the in the way called bounties. Uh, they're named enemies with kind of different bonuses, uh, and if you take them out, you can actually earn money by taking the bounties back to uh, the bartenders and collecting bounties on them, which made it really interesting. It made it uh, very rewarding to me to actually travel back through. I almost got more excited about the travel back through an area after I had completed a, a story mission than traveling to the end of the story mission to start because you never know what you're going to meet with all these kind of crazy bounties out there. It was really cool. My third pro, 
the level of carnage in this game is crazy insane. Um, one of the things they do that actually almost kind of made me feel bad, uh, the, the place is so overpopulated that there's just people everywhere, even in the areas where you're out to gunfight bad guys. And the bad guys don't care, so they just pull their guns. People will just start running everywhere, and just they'll get mowed down by gunfire, and then there's cars that get exploded, and everything reacts to you in this game. Uh, <clears throat> one of the things that I loved about it so much is like right down to the fact that if you're walking in the hub world and you bump into a pedestrian they actually react to you they move around you uh... in the combat it's it's just heightened like you can accidentally mow down pedestrians you can destroy cars you can destroy boxes if things get shot up i mean not every inch of the scenery is destructible but it really makes you feel like you're in the gunfight in the moment and i thought that was so cool uh... my fourth pro i gotta agree with all the other people the absolute aesthetic of this game is beautiful. You can tell that the developer put all sorts of love into truly creating an interesting cyberpunk world here. Uh, like I said, down to the people bumping around you, fighting with each other, they also have optional pieces of, of wording that happens when people are running or walking around you. Uh, there's never a missed opportunity for a piece of world building. Even even down to the interesting idea that not every enemy just attacks you straight out. They always have something to say to you right off the bat. And it's voiced. The voice acting in this game is decent. Um, and it's just it's just so interesting the way they've done this game. And, and, and the level of detail they've put into it is really something to behold. And even if you're not a fan of twin stick shooters and not a fan of something like this, I urge you to try this one out if for no other reason than to see this world firsthand. They really, they really just knocked it out of the park with the aesthetic. All right, so let's get into the cons. Before I get into the true cons, I want to give a really weird kind of secondary con uh, that I just want to throw out there. So when I, f because I'm not making this an official con because I don't know that this is everybody's experiencing this because I have not seen one review really quote this, but. Uh, I had huge performance issues when I first started playing. My PC is not the highest in the mill, but it it trucks. It's an okay PC. Uh, it could definitely should be able to handle this game. Uh, and what's really interesting is the first hour and a half that I played this game, I played it on the PC, um, <clears throat> and I just I could not find the right settings. I'm even going to include the footage of me messing with the settings just so you see what I'm talking about, and you see the frame rate dips that I was dealing with. Uh, I was really going to blast this game for that uh, until I realized uh, the second time I played it, because the first time I was obviously capturing for this review, the second time I played it, I didn't have OBS turned on and it ran completely smoothy. So much so that I actually turned my graphics back up from medium to high, did not do ultra, but I s didn't have any frame rate drops. So there is, at least for me, there was some sort of weird thing when I was capturing on this, when I was using the OBS capturing software, it somehow made this game run absolutely terribly. I don't know why, but that was just my experience, and I feel like I gotta make people aware. My first official con, though, is the character creation. Look, I love the character creation. I love any game that gives you character creation, and the fact that they did give you character creation is great. But the character creation in this is not good. It's very bad. There's like five options total. There's a lot of colors, but other than that, you really can't customize your face that much or even your hairdo uh, to a point where I would have enjoyed. And I'm not talking like, like there's just there's just so few options on it. And I think it's because as you play through this game, you get so many pieces of equipment that it doesn't really matter. You're not going to really see your base character anymore. But if you're going to put a character creator in here, I'd like a little bit more options. And guys, whoever's creating character creators out there, Mutton stash. There has to be a mutton stash in there. Please, please, please. Always a mutton stash. That's just a personal thing, though. Con number three. Is, while this game is very good at what it does, it does lack a little versatility. What I'm talking about here is there isn't really a lot of build options. I mean, you get a static seven or eight uh, skill places that you can put points into that up those but other than that you're doing really the same thing there's no stealth characters in this uh, 
you can build your character to be a little bit more, I mean, not magically inclined, but to be more towards the augments, but you can't really ever get so many augments, at least not that I saw, that you could really have a wide variety of power. So what it comes down to is you're just, you're tweaking the same thing, which is shooting a lot of people, uh, and that's it. Like, you can build yourself to be a little bit closer, a little bit farther away, but I didn't really see the build diversity that I would have liked from this game. And don't get me wrong, it's a twin stick shooter at heart, and they do that really well. And they're probably going for that. And if they're going for that, then I should just shut up, because that's they accomplish that 100%. But for me, with these kind of ARPG aspects put in, I would have liked a little bit more diversity to it. I would have liked a little bit more... <sighs> I would have liked to see my changes a little bit more on the screen uh, than what I saw in the amount of time I played. Now, in perfect fairness, I to remind everybody, I only got three and a half hours with this, so there could be a lot more of this down the road that I have not witnessed yet. And if there is, disregard my comment, I apologize. Nonetheless, uh, I would have liked to see a little bit more right off the bat, see a little bit more actual aspects of that. Uh, my last con is the guns. Not necessarily the guns themselves. They all felt fun and interesting. Um, but when I was moving through the area, I didn't really see any difference between, like, the different types of guns. Uh, hopefully that changes down the line, but every chest I opened just gave me money. Uh, the guns that players dropped were always baseline guns, and while I could upgrade those guns at a specific spot, a vendor. Um, I never felt like there was a lot of reason to collect a bunch of guns other than to just resell them. Again, really early in the game, might have noticed more later on, uh, but for what I for, for what I saw, I didn't see a ton of stuff to it. And, and one thing that really irked me, that is going to be a con, regardless of my amount of times, is the fact that the weapon vendor doesn't sell anything you haven't seen already. Just super irritating. Look, if you're gonna have a weapon vendor, he needs to have something that I can't get normally. Make it overpriced, make me work for it. But what's the point of a weapon vendor if the only things I can pick up are things that I've run into walking around? Really, right off the bat, you can buy a machine gun that's better than yours, but if you just go into the next area, everybody drops that machine gun. The same way with the shotgun. Like when you when it becomes available in the weapons vendor, the next area you're gonna start getting that shotgun, and that's just that that didn't sit right with me. I, if you're gonna have a weapon vendor, I want a bunch of things and I want big prices on the big items, but I want to be able to work to those items and get them. Uh, so there wasn't enough diversity in the weapons for me, and the weapon vendor could have been a little bit more diverse in the beginning. I think right off the bat here. Show me something to work for so that I can work up to it. Alright, so that's it. Let's get back down to whether I'm not whether I'm gonna stick with it. I actually think I'm gonna try and fit this in. I got a lot of games on my plate right now, but ah, the fighting, the gunfighting is just second to none. It's absolutely so much fun to do this. I've never had a twix, twin stick shooter just capture me the way it does, but they're so interesting in the moment gunfights. Uh, it actually almost makes me feel like John Wick, and it's not even going for that, which is really cool. So I, I think I'm actually going to try and play this at least for a few more hours, if not to the completion, uh, just, to, just to see what it does. So yeah. So that's it. That's the review. Hope this guy, this helped you guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and you can let me know in the comments below if you did or didn't. Uh, and if I'm wrong on things, again, I, I didn't get as much time as I usually do, but please let me know. Uh, and you guys can contact us on Facebook at Old Man Gaming DH, on Twitter at Old Man Gaming 9. You can join our Discord links in the description below. You can influence this and all of our shows from there. As long as you keep watching them and listening, we'll keep making them. We'll see you guys next time.